What's up, ladies and gents? It's Cyberland coming back to you with another review. This time we're not playing the game anymore, we're actually reviewing it. So, we're going into Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. So, let me give a little backstory on what happened to me with this game. So, originally, Chain of Memories came out, I believe, in the late 2000s. It was for the Game Boy Advance. And it picks up right after um, Kingdom Hearts, the first one. It's before part two. But it's right after part one. And I never played it because I was like, I just came off of this mega blockbuster game of Kingdom Hearts. And I was like, I'm not switching from a PlayStation 2 game now to a little Game Boy game. I was just like, and uh, to this day, that was probably one of the biggest, stupidest things that Square did um, with, with putting that game, putting that story on there. Because... Um, well, I'll get to that why too. So, <laughs> fast forward, I think a year or two, maybe three years after, I forget the timeline, but I know Kingdom Hearts 2 comes out, and I didn't really enjoy it as I thought I would. Um, and the reason why is because of Chain of Memories. Um, there was so much story that I didn't know what the hell was going on because I didn't play Chain of Memories. And some people say, well, no, it's like, no, it, it's important. This is Chain of Memories is really half of Kingdom Hearts 2, in my opinion. Or you could say the other half of Kingdom Hearts, take it how you want to. And uh, I gotta say, uh, the card system, as you can see right here, it was, it did take me a while to get it down, but it was fun. It was something different. Would I say I want to do this moving forward with all Kingdom Hearts games? Absolutely not. It did have a change of pace, but um, the story was cool. It kind of felt like Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories kind of reminds me of being like the Matrix. It, it felt like you're in the Matrix of Kingdom Hearts. Like everything around you isn't what it is. Like the people here aren't real. Um, everything around you can technically kill you, but it's not technically real, if you get what I'm saying. Um, it's kind of like Sora's plugged into a machine, and if he dies in here, then he dies in real life kind of thing. It kind of gave that vibe. Uh, Donald and Goofy are with him. But when he enters matches, they get turned into a card. He can't, they're actually not fighting alongside him like the other Kingdom Hearts, like Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2. And that is where at times it can be difficult because there's going to come points in the game where you need help. And the whole point of Kingdom Hearts is you have those two guys to back you up. They go handle some stuff, as you can see right here. They're cards when you're inside the actual... Um, areas like this or they um, you know they they handle stuff while you're fighting something they'll take care of something else or you'll um, you know you'll you know you guys work together so as you can see um, it's just me 
by myself, fighting these guys and getting my ass kicked, because of course, I really didn't know the card system just yet. I was just run through the cards. And it took a while off outside of the game to come in. I had to do some research because I wasn't getting this card system. It just wasn't clicking to me. So I did some research and then, you know, figured it out that you want to put the cards together. It's kind of a form called a slight. And then you have three cards get used as one. And that's when you can really start doing damage and, and not dying so much as I did. <laughs> so, um, also with the game, we see the introduction of Organization 13, who they, what they look like. Um, and here we go. We got Squall, or they like to say Leon, but it's Squall. Um, and we got uh, Eris and uh, Yenith, I think. I think her name was Yenith again, and Pluto. Um, but you have some familiar faces in here from different parts of the game. But again, at the end of the day, it's not... Um, it's not them. It's a memory. That's why it's called Chain of Memories. These are memories of Sora's, and he's trying to sort them. And at the same time, you have Organization 13 trying to trying to uh, take his memories for, for nefarious reasons. That's kind of explained more so in, in uh, Kingdom Hearts 2. So, with Organization 13, this is where you, you know, at the end of the first game, you saw them show up, but you don't see what they look like. And in this one, this is when you start to see what, you know, the character, who the who some of the villains are. Um, there's only, I believe it was six or seven members that are shown in here out of the 13. Um, you don't see the rest until Kingdom Hearts 2, which is technically a year after this game because, you know, um, the, way the, the way Part 2 picks up. As far as uh, gameplay... The gameplay was cool. The card system was cool. Um, as you continue to get things down, it really got to a point where if you just had like Mushu and now nah, see here we go. Um, you see Organization 13. I believe this one is I forgot who was the but that's Axel. So and Axel, I think out of all the organization members, I know they kept him around future on, and I think it was because Axel was a badass. I mean, he was just like, I loved Axel. He he had a certain way about him that was just really cool. He he come he was really kind of, out of all the members, he came off anti-hero. Um, he didn't come off like a villain. He kind of kind of acted more like an uh, anti-hero as opposed to Larxene or, or um, the other characters, or Marluxia, you know, those characters. He was more so just like, he did what he had to do kind of thing, but he just had a mannerism about him. Maybe he's not exactly what he appears like, even if he does put on a front like he was going to kill me uh, when we fought. And at first, I think, um, when I fought Axel the first time, it was like I was able to kind of hold my own, but then later I started to realize, okay, you kind of need to know how to use these cards properly, or otherwise you're going to be in trouble. And... Uh, I think with this, I was just, yeah, I don't think I was fully equipped yet or I was doing, knew what I was doing. Yeah, I'm still not getting getting down exactly how to fight this guy yet. See, I'm still like pressing the cards one at a time. And again, don't press the cards one at a time. Put them together as a slight and that's how you can uh, beat them. Of course, he only had so much health, so I think I was able to get away with it. But if I knew what I was doing, I would have been able to... Uh, survive a lot longer but you know when starting out this wasn't like the other kingdom or it wasn't like kingdom hearts 1 and 2 and you don't know what you don't know especially starting out and as you progress to you get better it's not a hard game it's not a hard uh, learning curve or a difficult learning curve it's just you know you just have to once you, that's really what it is just get the card down that you want to use three cards at once because that you know if you have four four three will add it up, that's your number, so that's 8, 11. As long as you do that and they don't do a number above you, then you'll be able to hit them and they can't hit you kind of thing. Um, and that's really how it goes, you know. Um, it's whoever has the higher set of cards, but there's going to be times where um, the other guy will have a higher set than you, but what you do is you start grinding and you start getting uh, cards that are 8s and 9s. And then... You can just run through anybody, it doesn't matter what they have. Especially if you get your stuff out first, 
they can't get their stuff out, and then you got them. You got them by the balls! Like ACDC. So, you know. Uh, Music-wise, the music in the game had a lot of memorabilia from Kingdom Hearts 1. The, the one theme... Uh, oh, yeah, see, as you can see, the worlds. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty much the same ones from um, Kingdom Hearts 1, except Transverse Town. That's new. Uh, you didn't go to that in the first game, and then it gets more opened up when you when you play Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, as far as the music, again, uh, mostly memorabilia outside of certain sequences of the game. Um, it was just pretty much music from Kingdom Hearts 1. The one theme that was spooky to me and really kind of, I wouldn't say got under my skin, but it got my attention, was the... Uh, Castle Oblivion theme. That was really like, oof. That was just, it was really creepy. And it kind of just felt like, almost like, I'm coming here to die kind of thing. The music just gave that vibe like, you're checking in, but you ain't checking out. It was just really eerie, really creepy, really scary to me. Um, I think the top, the ice on the, <laughs> the icing on the cake would have been a Maleficent, or Maleficent had shown up, because I always thought she was a, a she was always the scariest villain to me in the Disney, um, the Disney films and stuff. So, gameplay, that's what it was. Story is pretty much, yeah, just Sora is trying to find um, Kyrie, but his memories are getting tampered with so he doesn't realize who, who he thinks is Kyrie is not. And again, it's just, it's kind of like a Matrix story kind of thing. He's caught inside a system where he thinks he's, he's progressing, but he's not. And, uh, as a result, <laughs> there's a, uh, there's a lot of problems with that. Uh, difficulty. I played this on normal. I'm not, I'm, I'm an old school jammer, but I, I've, I've been through the whole thing of, playing difficult games growing up and I'm just I don't really have the patience for it anymore I just play the game to have fun I don't really care about oh I beat it on this ranking or whatever ah here we go so as you can see I did three cards at once. there's a slight and this one's called lethal frame where you freeze the person and you can beat the crap out of them and once I got that down I kid you not I was just going through unless like depending on what it was um, I, if I had hard, high cards, I would sometimes not use the slide, as you can see, but when I, uh, depending on what it was, if it was an, uh, an attack that would take out everybody, I would use the slide. If it was a single thing, like, because I had high cards, I would just hit them individually. Um, yeah, it just, it's just really dependent. Um, but the difficulty, yeah, I just did on normal. For Sora, I didn't have any hard play I think the hardest place was Alice in Wonderland because I didn't really I think for Sora it's difficult at the at the beginning because you don't have very many cards um, grinding is particularly important to some degree and this is why I'll say it is is because if you want to yeah gotcha but if you want to have the best cards um, what you want to do is you want to get these, uh, you want to go through the levels, every single area, every single room, and take out everybody in there, because then you have a more probable chance of dropping a certain type of card, which is you want you want zero cards especially, and you definitely want the card which is, um, it looks like a, a golden ticket, and you want to get those as much as possible, you don't, and that's the other thing, don't waste those cards if you, you know, don't waste those cards, don't spend them. Unless you, um, you know, oh, see, there's some of the organization right here. So the guy on the right, he was probably, he was pretty difficult, actually. He gave me a little bit of trouble the first time around, but then once I figured out how to get him, and I, I put a stop on him. But you want to have those cards because those cards have, give you access to Keyblades, and as well as um, uh, other items like elixirs and stuff. The Moogles, I didn't really start using till more more than halfway through the game because I wanted to save them. I really wanted to hold on to all the stuff I needed until I got towards the ending. 
so then I wouldn't have to worry about getting killed because the final boss I really ran through the first time. Um, and of course he's like, well, you played on normal, but I'm like, yeah, I played it on normal because, aka, uh, I just want to have a good time. I'm not interested in trying to get irritated because I keep losing, keep dying. Because there was some times where I was really getting my ass handed to me with, with, uh, with Sora. And then, especially Riku. So, Riku, my issue with playing with Riku was only one thing. Whereas Sora starts from level 1 to level 10, you know, level 1 to 13, like going up, like the castle. Riku starts from top to bottom, whereas when Sora starts from bottom to top, Riku starts from top to bottom. So he's going down while Sora's going up. And unfortunately, as you continue to progress, um, they don't let you pick your cards. And I felt that was a huge disservice. I think you should be allowed to keep the cards you want. And unfortunately, when you're playing Riku, they control the the game was set up to where they keep your cards. So you know, I got eights and sevens and sixes and stuff. And depending on the level, they just give you the cards that they feel you should be you should have, which I kind of felt was not cool. I felt that did a huge disservice. Was not happy about it, and it did cause me a problem. I um, was playing. I think out of all the levels, I had no problem with until I got to Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, I was getting killed left and right. Um, I couldn't complete the area for, for a while. It actually took me a good amount of time to get through that place. And the crazy thing is, that was the um, that was the first place you're technically, you start out with in Kingdom Hearts. And I was just like, what the hell is going on? Uh, very, very, very difficult. And I gotta say, I had to kind of, you know... Look up what other people did because, you know, at this point, I I'm, I'm, should be done with this game and I can't get past this, the boss that was there. And when in Rome, do as the Romans do, you know. So we did that and uh, got through the game. Uh, I felt Riku was cool. He was entertaining. And it kind of gave a little bit more backstory to kind of like he's he's dealing with his dark and light side. It kind of like, you know, Darth Vader kind of thing he kind of gives off. Uh, here's another member. But I but I think what got me more interested in playing Riku is because the other members. I just wanted to see these guys. I just wanted to see what they were about. And I got to say, fighting both of them, I ran right through them like nothing. But I just want to see, just, you know, because again... Chain of Memories for me was more of a, uh, a backstory that I never got to play for, for over a decade. So when this was finally available, when I bought um, the game for um, PlayStation, it was just me getting to see everything for the first time. So I didn't really... You know, some people would be like, oh, I'm not going to play this, 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 or that. I'll re you know, For me, it was like, this is a game I never got to play because I just didn't want to play. I didn't want to go from playing on a nice size television screen to now playing on a little tiny Game Boy screen with graphics that, are, that looked very dated. I just, I just didn't want to do that, so I decided to wait and, you know, the cards fell where they fell and unfortunately uh, I didn't get to play this until recently. Of course, because I didn't have a PlayStation 4 and that's, that's a whole nother topic and it's neither here nor there. So, um, the other thing with Riku is... Uh, it was fun to play with him, but what was kind of a little bit annoying was Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse comes in and will heal you, but the problem was there would be times, like not right here, but there would be times when I'm playing and I wouldn't get a Mickey Mouse card, and I'm about to die. And I'm just like, um, can I have some health, please? Because uh, you're supposed to be here to help me out, and I'm not getting no health, and I'm going to get killed. And there were some times where I would get killed because I wouldn't have a Mickey Mouse card in my inventory. So, that was a little annoying. I don't know if they totally did their full homework with Rika as opposed to Sora, but, you know, I think maybe this was an add-on. I don't know if Rika was originally part of the Chain of Memories original gameplay, but who knows. Uh, rating for this game, I'll give it a 4 out of 5. Yes, sirs. Again... Um, there was just some elements of it that were uh, a little bit annoying and you know but overall it was a it was a great game it, it had its 
it had its moments. It was fun. It was entertaining. Um, and the story was great. The story was really good. Um, there wasn't anything about it that I didn't like, per se. It's just a Matrix, Matrix game again to me. But it did, but... The card system, I get it, but what if it didn't have the card system? What if they we didn't do the cards and we just did like another Kingdom Hearts game? I think I probably would have given a 4.5 out of 5. Again, the card system's cool, but you're coming off of Kingdom Hearts. Do you really want to use cards to have to get through the game and beat people? I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna play this game, play it for um, or or go watch the videos of the story if you can. If you really don't want to play the game, because it is it's very important uh, to the Kingdom Hearts two storyline. Because if you don't know what's going on here, it, it it's just you're missing you're missing half of the story. There's a lot of stuff here that explains what why things happen in part two and. After I played this, I felt so much better when I when I got through part two, because I had a better understanding of the game and the characters in Organization 13 and and who certain people were. Whereas when I first played Kingdom Hearts 2, because I didn't play this, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I, I was just it just wasn't as um, as fun. It wasn't just as thrilling. So that being said, um, I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care. <laughs>